I'm going to show you how to attack the fianchetto position. A fianchetto position is uh, a position like this one, where black has at some stage brought out a bishop uh, via g7, which could have happened after the following moves, for example. So let's say this was the starting position. Now black could have uh, continued playing like this. Now this is what we call a fianchetto. Let's say the game continued like this. And if the bishop disappears somehow, like for example capturing the knight on c3, then the king's position becomes very weak because of those two squares on f6 and h6. Those two squares are known as holes in the black position. Now white has a very simple plan to win this game. Just by placing the bishop on f6, threatening queen h6, and the next move would be queen g7 checkmate, which is absolutely unavoidable. Black can do nothing about it. So let's see. Let's say black moves the rook from f8 to e8, then the white queen comes to h6, and there's absolutely nothing black can do to stop the checkmate on g7. Here it is, checkmate. Now the same thing could have happened to white. Let's say white has done the fianchetto on the king side, and it's black's turn now. Obviously after the move queen f3, there is nothing white can do to stop the checkmate on g2. So this is a valuable pattern to remember against the fianchetto. Try to remember this one. Now I'm going to show you another valuable pattern against the fianchetto. In this position, black has done fianchetto on the king side. But the normal plan of uh, queen h6 threatening checkmate on g7 will fail because of queen a2. White gets checkmated first. So what should white do from this position? Well, fortunately white can speed up the attack with a beautiful queen sacrifice on h7, forcing the black king to take the queen, then comes rook h1 check, king g8, and here comes the checkmate with the rook on h8. So let's see this all over again. From this position, the best move for white would be to sacrifice the queen on h7, followed by check on h1, and then comes the checkmate on h8. All right, now we have a different position in which white looks in trouble because black is threatening checkmate on a2. Queen a2 would be checkmate. So what can white do against this threat? Well, if you notice in this position, the h7 pawn is missing. This is very important because white can take advantage of this fact just by sacrificing the queen on h8, checking the king, and forcing the king 
to take the queen, allowing white to do the double check. That's the power of double check, because black is neither allowed to take this rook, nor to block off the check by the bishop. The only choice for black is to move back the king to g8. And here it comes, the checkmate with the rook on h8. So this was the third valuable pattern against the fianchetto. Let's see if we can go through all of them all over again. So this was the first pattern against the fianchetto position, where white are taking advantage of the holes in black position. Remember those two squares, f6 and h6? are called holes for the black position. So the best uh, thing for white to do is just to place the bishop on f6 followed by queen h6 and now there's nothing that can stop the checkmate on g7. This was the second pattern that we need to remember in which White sacrifices the queen on h7, followed by rook h1 check, and rook h8 checkmate. And this was the third pattern for attacking the fianchetto position, which can only happen when the h-pawn is missing. So here it is. another queen sacrifice followed by double check and checkmate on h8 so these were the three valuable patterns that we need to remember for attacking the fianchetto position